Agent RC reporting in. I've received a new mission to explore the U.S. Space and Rocket Center's archives. This mission will take me outside the Rocket Center itself to discover what has happened to the Space Shuttle Pathfinder. It once sat atop the shuttle stack outside the museum, but has since gone missing. I am creating this log so that if something happens to me, someone else can pick up where I have left off. RC, over and out. Once at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, I was able to see for myself that Pathfinder was indeed gone. How could a space shuttle orbiter disappear without a trace? This artifact had graced the Rocket Center's space line for 30 years, serving as a point of inspiration for generations of museum guests and space campers alike. The stakes couldn't be higher. Upon closer inspection, I discovered an artifact on the ground beside the shuttle stack. It resembled the shape and dimensions of a space shuttle orbiter. But could it be Pathfinder? To answer my questions, I met with my contact at the Rocket Center, Ed Stewart, who confirmed to me that this artifact was indeed Pathfinder. But how is that so? Was Pathfinder not a real space shuttle orbiter? I asked Ed all these questions and more. Now, originally it would have just been called the test article. We kind of called it Pathfinder with a capital P here at the Rocket Center because it's sort of its official name as far as our exhibition and display. Back in the day, it was a Pathfinder with a lowercase p. Rather than taking one of these very expensive, some of them kind of still in process flight orbiters, we're gonna build out a very simple, very inexpensive, meets the same size, weight, center of gravity, all this good stuff, test article. And we're gonna make sure that everything's gonna fit and work the way that it's supposed to without risking damage to a multi-billion dollar spacecraft. So that was kind of the genesis of Pathfinder and why it came to exist in the first place. We still use Pathfinders throughout the space program today. There's been Pathfinders for SLS. It's a principle and a concept that makes a lot of sense in terms of being able to do a lot of testing and checking without having to spend billions and billions of dollars. Now, over time, Pathfinders changed quite a bit. When it was originally built, it was very simple in its visual form. It almost looked like a render from like a late 70s, early 80s video game. Very low polygon, very simple shapes, but still meeting those very important specifications for length, width, height, and so on. Then eventually it kind of retired and was done with being a usable piece of hardware. And then it became part of an exhibition that was gonna travel the world. And so people wanted to kind of take this test article and show it around Japan specifically it did spend a, an extended period of time over there and underwent heavy modification so that it could be sort of taken apart, put into shipping containers, and then transported over. In addition to those modifications, they also sort of reskinned it and gave it a paint job to make it look more like a flight orbiter. So they added shapes made out of fiberglass and plywood to kind of make the wings have their curved lift surfaces. So all of those changes kind of went into what ultimately became known as Pathfinder with a capital P here at the Rocket Center. And so once it was done touring the world, we brought it back to Huntsville, which is where it was originally built, and it ended up going on top of our stack with our ET and our SRBs. And for decades, it hung out outside, being maintained, being washed, being occasionally repainted. And over time, the sunlight, the weather and extreme temperatures kind of took their toll. And so we actually had to take it down and do a major refurbishment and restructuring of what the Pathfinder orbiter would look like. So in February of 2021, Pathfinder came down off the top of its external tank and solid rocket booster so it could begin the refurbishment process. Of course, that starts with beginning to strip off the old skin, the old materials that were beginning to fail. And as we went through that process, a lot of inspection started to happen. So we needed to look at the internal steel framework to see what kind of condition is the framework in. Once the inspections were complete, then we began the process of engineering to know what kind of modifications we were gonna to need to make as minimal as possible to kind of maintain the integrity of the original artifact as much as we could. However, some changes were necessary, making sure that there were places in the frame where water was captured that it could drain, adding places for our skin to be mounted. And now we're well into the process of sort of building Pathfinder back. 
And one of the incredibly unique things that we're doing is we're taking advantage of some modern manufacturing with modern materials. So what you can see is that the skin panels that are being added back onto Pathfinder are no longer sheet metal and plywood forms and structures. What we're doing is we're utilizing a unique 3D printed and machined technology to produce these panels to give our orbiter back its flight-like shape. A company called Branch Technologies is providing our 3D printed skin panels for us. The technology involves large-scale 3D printers that print this matrix structure that then gets filled with foam and then that foam filled object goes into a CNC machine that machines all the surfaces down to precise sizes and dimensions so that when you put all the panels together onto Pathfinder's internal structure, they form the skin of an orbiter that looks like a flight vehicle. Now they're very lightweight, they're easy to repair in the field, and we think that they're gonna last many, many, many decades, much longer than the original plywood and fiberglass and sheet metal structures that were on there. Once the 3D printed panel assembly is finished and all of the pieces are on the orbiter, the next step will be a kind of seal coat and paint process where we'll add details like the tiles, the ingress signs and danger signs and things along those lines to make the vehicle look a lot more flight-like. We'll also be adding distressing to the paint job to give it a little bit of that I've been through re-entry feel. Then we'll be picking Pathfinder up and putting it back on top of the stack so that she can spend the next 50 years looking better than ever. And that concludes another successful mission to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center's archives. To follow future missions to the Rocket Center's archives, subscribe below. RC, over and out.